I'm Dave, and welcome to the Notable ChatGPT plugin. As we're just getting started here, let's take a moment to learn about some of the capabilities of the plugin so we can get the most out of the notebook experience. Now, hopefully you've had success creating your first notebook, but if not, watch me as I walk through how to create a very simple notebook that simply prints out welcome to the Notable ChatGPT plugin. So as a quick refresher, you need to be using the GPT-4 model with plugins enabled and have installed the Notable plugin. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom here, I'm gonna give it the prompt that simply says, create a notebook that prints out welcome to the Notable ChatGPT plugin. And when you're interacting with plugins, you will see these little squares pop up here, these little rectangles. It's green when it's currently interacting with a plugin and it turns gray when that interaction's finished. Now, depending on the complexity of your prompt, you may see multiple of these rectangles pop up as it's interacting with the plugin. It's best to just wait until ChatGPT responds with the text with the result of that interaction. So let's just give it a second here and let's see what it does. So we can see here, it says that it's created a notebook called the Welcome Notebook, and it added a cell that printed out Welcome to the Notable ChatGPT plugin. So there's our first notebook that was created using the plugin. Now let's click a link to view and interact with that notebook, because again, when you're creating a notebook with the plugin, it is creating an artifact inside of Notable that allows you to view and edit and modify that notebook whenever you want. So let's click here to say, let's view the notebook. It's gonna open up our Notable account, and there is that notebook, and sure enough, it's a notebook that's called Welcome Notebook, and it prints out Welcome to the Notable ChatGPT plugin. At any point, we can interact with this notebook, and we can even update and modify the notebook. So if I want to change that to say, Welcome to the Notable plugin, we are excited that you are here, I can do that, and I can execute that cell, and now you see the output is updated based on what I just modified in that notebook. All right, now that we've created this simple notebook, let's go back and create a new notebook that actually does some real data analysis. So go back into ChatGPT, I'm gonna give it this prompt here and ask it, I wanna perform some EDA or exploratory data analysis on the Denver Public Library to see which library locations had the most visitors over the past year. I gave it a link to where the CSV was located for that data, but I'm gonna show some examples later in this video about how you can upload your own data sets or even connect to your external database if you have a data warehouse you wanna to connect to. I also add a little bit to the prompt there that says, when I'm authoring the notebook, always include markdown cells to explain each code cell. That just makes the notebook a little easier to read and understand what's happening. So let's let ChatGPT work here for a little bit, and then we'll look at the results that it creates. And now that it's finished with its analysis, we can go back and look to see all the steps that it took. One of the first things that it did is it downloaded the data from the URL that I gave it, and then printed out the first five rows to help just show an example of what the data looks like. It did some summary statistics, and then to answer the question that I asked specifically, it produced a visualization to show which library location had the most visitors in this past year. We can actually see that visualization right here within the ChatGPT interface. But we can also click the link to the notebook and go and view that within Notable. And now we see all the content that was created, including the markdown cells that I asked it to create to help me you know, better understand what's happening in the notebook, as well as the code cells and the results of executing that code cell. So there's the first five rows of the data that was brought back. Here's some quick summary stats of all the columns. And here's that visualization that was created with Matplotlib. And just like we saw before, this is fully interactive. So if I wanna make any updates to this inside the notebook interface itself, I can do that. Now I wanna take a quick moment to talk about where these notebooks live inside Notable, because it's gonna be important to understand as we continue to work with the Notable ChatGPT plugin. Notebooks live inside projects. And projects are simply a way to organize your work, to have notebook files, data files, or any other assets you want all in one location as part of your analysis. So in this case here, we're looking at this project, which is called Denver Libraries EDA, and it only has one file inside of it, which is the notebook, Denver Libraries EDA. Well, how is that possible? Well, at the start of this, when I prompted ChatGPT to do this analysis, it actually created the new project for me. And I said, all right, I'm gonna create this project, and I'm gonna, now I'm gonna create a notebook inside that project, even though I didn't necessarily ask it to do that it thought it was being helpful to try to organize the analysis to put it all in one project. But going back to Notable here, let's look to see what other projects I have access to. So this was the one that was just recently created by ChatGPT. I can go up here at the top here to switch between my projects. You see I have one other project called my first project. And that is where that first notebook that was created by that prompt that simply said, welcome to the Notable ChatGPT plugin. It created the welcome notebook there. Now, additionally, in this first project, my first project, everyone will see the same notebook that's called What Can You Do in a Notable Notebook that contains some helpful documentation for getting up and running. But one of the things to know about projects is that ChatGPT has the concept of what's called the default project. That is, when you ask it to create a notebook, 
without any additional context of where it should be created, that's by default where it's gonna be created. So I can go back to ChatGPT and I can even ask it, what is my default project? I gotta spell it, right? And it should respond with my default project, which I'm gonna bet is my first project. And there we go. We see that ChatGPT knows that default project is my first project. That's why when I asked it to create a notebook without any additional context of where it should be created, it created it inside of that project. At any point though, I can always update and change that. So let's say I liked my new uh, Denver EDA library note, uh, project and I want that to be my default project. Simply just copy and paste the link to the project, go over to ChatGPT and said, please make this my default project. Now for any additional prompts going forward, where there's no context that ChatGPT has about where would be the best place to create that notebook, it's gonna to default to creating it inside that project, which is now updated to be the Denver Library EDA project. Right, let's talk a little bit more about what we can do with projects inside Notable. So I'll click a link to the project here. And again, as we saw before, this was a project that was just created for this one notebook, so it only has one notebook inside of it. But I do have the option to upload any additional files that I want to this project to help me with my further analysis. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna upload some files to my computer here. Let's just pick a few of these CSV files and upload them. And now these files are gonna live inside that project and ChatGPT will have access to them if I wanna do later prompts that reference any of these files. We can prove that by going back to the prompt here and now saying, what files do I have access to? And it's gonna go out, do a request to Notable to look inside that project and respond back with the same listing of files that you just saw me upload into the project right there. So there's the one notebook that I added, and now we should have these four data files coming after that. And so let's say I wanted to create a new notebook that accesses one of these files. So let's say, yes, let's uh, create a new notebook to analyze the NYC Squirrels CSV data set and create a map showing the location of each of these squirrels. Right. I can simply reference these files by their file name and ChatGPT will create a notebook, again, inside this project that, rep that accesses that file and does the analysis that I want it to do, which in this case is just creating a simple map. And there we go. It finished with its analysis. It gave me a link to the notebook, which I can go ahead and view. And just like I asked, it accessed the file that I'd uploaded locally to my project called NYC Squirrels. You can see the full listing of files in the project on the left sidebar there. And it created a map that showed the location of them all. And clearly, this data set only contained locations of, of squirrels inside Central Park within New York City. All right, now so far we've seen examples about how to use the Notable ChatGPT plugin to analyze data that was hosted on the web, as well as how to use the plugin to access and analyze data that was uploaded locally to a Notable project. But let's now talk about how we can use the plugin to access data that was contained in an external data connection or data warehouse. So the first thing we need to do here is set up the connection to that external database or data warehouse. And we can do that within the notebook page over on the left within the data connection sidebar. So you click on the little database icon here. And now I already have a data connection that was set up here, but I'll quickly walk you through the steps to create your own one. Click plus, create data connection and pick from the variety of different types that Notable currently supports. Now, if something that you're using is not listed here, please contact us, we're more than happy to add support for that as well. But if what you're using is here already, you simply click the database type that you want, and then go in and enter all the information uh, for that particular database type. Now, again, I've already set one up, so I'm not gonna walk through these steps. I'll show you what I already have. So I called my data connection, just simply my data connection, and over on the data connection sidebar here, we can actually start exploring the schema of it. So you can see here, I have this schema for Lake Summit, has a couple different tables in it, including this weather table. Now when I use ChatGPT, I can prompt it to do analysis based on information contained in these data connections. So for example here, I can start a new prompt that says, let's do some analysis of this Lake Summit weather data that I've set up in this connection called my data connection. And just like I referenced the data files before that were uploaded to the project, I can simply reference the name of these data connections in the prompts to ChatGPT. And I simply said, let's create some charts to understand the changes in the weather over the past year. And let's kick that off.
Right, now that that's finished, we can go and review the conversation here to see the various visualizations and data that was returned to ChatGPT, or you can just click the link and view it with a notable. And again, one of the things that made this experience special is that ChatGPT was creating content for SQL cells that were querying out to my external data connection. So again, I had that data connection called my data connection. You can see it would automatically create a SQL cell, use that data connection, and query the data to return as part of the analysis. And for some of that data, it returned it via SQL and then later used Python to create visualizations. So we saw this average monthly temperature over the past year. We saw additional things about number of rainfall and I think humidity here as well, right? All created based on that prompt using uh, SQL cells and the external data connection in order to get access to its data. All right, to start to wrap things up here, I wanna talk about some of the powerful things that you can do inside a Notable once you have the data returned in the notebook that was created from ChatGPT. And for this, I wanna go back to the New York City squirrel data example. So one of the common things that ChatGPT will do is it will simply ask for a head of the data frame, which are the first five rows. You can see it here, presents a nice little summary within the ChatGPT conversation that just gives you a sample of what the data is. But inside of Notable, we built a lot of powerful tools for doing analysis of a data frame as well as creating data visualizations on top of that. And so one of the things you may wanna do is just remove that call for dot head and have it return the entire data frame. And because we do that, we now get the entire data frame returned. We can see there's 3,000 rows of this data. I can simply scan down through it. I can scan across at all the different columns. I see the distribution at the top. I see what data um, field types there are. I can change these at any point. I can rename the columns. I can reorder the columns. I can do a lot of you know, quick and easy analysis um, on the data that's returned in the data frame to include automatically brushing and creating easy filters on top of this. But one of the really powerful things that we've done is created an easy no-code data visualization capability that sits on top of these data frames called Data Explorer or DEX. And that allows you to go through and either pick a particular data visualization type that you want, and we support over 40 different data visualization types, or simply explore with Data Prism where it will suggest data visualization types based on the size and shape of your data. And just like we saw before, we know there's a geographic coordinates uh, for the squirrel data. And so mapping is a great data visualization type, a tile map is a great data visualization type we may want to explore. And at any point, we can look through the different data visualization types that Data Prism brought back, and we can click on and explore a particular type, changing the settings however we want to kind of customize this data visualization to exactly suit our use case. All right, the last thing that I want to talk about is the Notable Pro Plan and some of the powerful features that it provides. Notable Pro Plan provides access to larger hardware machines to include large CPUs as well as even GPUs, as well as additional concurrent kernels and a longer kernel session timeout. Let's talk about how that may impact your ability to use the Notable ChatGPT plugin. So if I go back to ChatGPT here and say, create a notebook to analyze the 2015.csv data file. One of the things that's gonna to try to do is to create that notebook, like you saw before, it'll access the file from my project files, and we'll start that kernel up. But it's gonna run into a limit of that I've already hit the max number of concurrent kernels I have created because I have three running notebooks already, which is the max limit to the free tier. So you see here in a second, it's gonna, it's gonna say it ran into that. And just like I expected, it ran into the limit of number of concurrent kernels that can be running in the free tier, which is three. Now, it asked me if I wanted to shut down any of those running kernels, or upgrade to the pro plan. Upgrading the pro plan would increase that limit up to 10. So when you're working in ChatGPT and you're quickly creating new notebooks and doing new analysis, you're not limited by the small number of concurrent kernels you can have running. Another big area that you can benefit from on the pro tier is access to hardware sizes. So if you have large data sets and you need to access larger hardware sizes, but either CPU or GPU, you can get unlimited use of these larger hardware sizes by upgrading to the pro tier. All right, I hope that was a helpful introduction to some of the powerful things that the Notable ChatGPT plugin can do. We saw examples about how to create notebooks that analyze and access data that's hosted on the web. We talked a little bit about projects and how to organize your work inside Notable, how you can upload data to those projects, and then prompt ChatGPT to access and analyze the data that's contained in those files in those projects. We also learned about how to connect an external data connection, and then prompt ChatGPT to do SQL queries against data in the external data connection. We also learned a little bit about some of the in-app features of Notable, like our powerful no-code data visualization capability Data Explorer, or DEX, as well as some of the features of the Notable Pro Plan that allow you to take your analysis even further with more power. 
And last, I just want to talk about where some additional resources for help may be if you're just getting started. So please do check out our docs page at docs.notable.io that have a lot of information about the Notable features as well as a Notable ChatGPT plugin. You can see the list of recent updates as we're making more updates to the plugin right there as well as go to our community page and join the discussion with all the different community members. Any questions that you have, any feature requests that you have, please go in there and engage with us and we're more than happy to help. So I hope this was helpful and best of luck using the Notable ChatGPT plugin.